What's up guys? It's Brandon Adkins. You guessed it, we're back and we're gonna break some stuff. So for the first episode this season, we thought it'd be fun to use some impact. So we've got a leather stamp here. We've designed it so you can change out different logos. So we've got our company logo here. We're gonna test out a few different materials. We've got ABS, onyx, and stainless steel. And we've got a few surprises for you on the stainless steel. So first up, we're gonna try out the ABS insert. And we've got a little leather notebook. We're gonna try it out, see if we can hammer in the logo on that. So the ABS did pretty good, but I think it's gonna wear out pretty quickly. Let's see how the Onyx does instead. I'd say the Onyx did a pretty good job. It's gonna be a little bit more durable, but I'm interested to see what the stainless steel can do. Stainless steel worked nicely, but it's not gonna be break it with Brandon unless we add some firepower. Thanks for checking out season two of Break It With Brandon. As you can see, there's only one man left standing here. If you wanna see how to make strong metal parts on a Mark Forge Metal X, give us a call today. Normally, this is where I would show you guys kind of the carnage of some of the parts that we had, but as you saw in the video, there wasn't much left of some of them. So we'll talk a little bit about our material choices and what makes the most sense here. So initially when we were talking about this idea of a leather stamp, I thought it would be kind of cool. I've used these tools before, typically they're metal. And when we started thinking about it, a lot of the Mark Forge parts we can make pretty strong with fiber reinforcement. We may not have to go to that extent here, which in this case we didn't. We ended up just running with the onyx material for the uh, composite printed parts. But at any rate, we tried out a few different materials in typical fashion of what we do. Now, with most leather stamping tools, there's no need for it to get hot, but we thought that we could sort of take an additional step there and make it a little bit more fun by sort of dual purposing this thing as a leather brand. So. That was the main reason that we went with the stainless steel stamp. So the one that actually is still intact. This one worked really, really well. We'll talk more about it here in just a second. But we also printed with ABS because that's what I had loaded in my printer at home. And then of course Onyx, which we've seen super impressive results with in the last season of Break It With Brandon. So with the ABS part, I did a little bit of design work and my idea was I wanted to make this leather stamp sort of interchangeable. So you can see here I've got, you know, just an open space where I can put in a bunch of different logos. I chose Onyx for the uh, actual stamp body and then we just swap out the logos here. So pretty obvious choice. Onyx did a really great job, especially for the impact area. I was a little bit concerned about maybe some of these edges starting to break away from the impact, but overall it held up really well. The other thing that you guys can't see there's actually an embedded hex nut inside this part. So I've got a little attachment screw here where I can basically just, you know, fit in the new logo and screw it into that captured hex nut. So somewhere inside this part, we've actually got threads in there. So pretty cool, um, 
you know, design benefit of the Mark Forge machines. I can pause the print. In fact, you guys saw that in the last season of Break It With Brandon where we captured a chisel inside of that wedge. Go back and watch that episode if you'd like to check it out. But we use the same concept here. Now, with those logo designs, I can swap it out. The ABS, of course, is a really good proof of concept. I can get a pretty inexpensive print pretty quickly and just sort of test it out, make sure everything fits. In fact, that worked to my advantage here because I did find that I undersized the clearance hole for the screw just a little bit. So I did end up printing it again, which, you know, little consequence there, pretty cheap part. Now, then we started printing with the Onyx material and I was actually really impressed how this one did in the non-heated leather stamp scenario. We were able to just, you know, screw it on there, take a couple whacks at it, and it did in fact make a pretty good emboss in the leather. So overall, I was pleased with the results there. It is a little bit stronger material, a little bit more durable than ABS. So if you're gonna do any type of tooling uh, similar to what we did here, the Onyx is gonna have some pretty good longevity as compared to PLA or ABS, for example. Um, the other thing that I'll mention with it too, the Onyx has a little bit, I would say, nicer surface finish on some of those edges that we actually use for the tooling. Just from the way that the Mark Forge technology works, um, you get a pretty nice surface finish out of a lot of those edges. So it worked for a nice, clean, crisp line uh, when we looked at the emboss. Now obviously the metal is going to have some sharper edges on it. Uh, with this particular example, we printed in 17.4 pH stainless, uh, which once we heated this thing up, we found that, you know, because stainless doesn't want to give off its heat very well, it took a long time to heat up and it stayed hot for a really long time. So if you're in need of any parts that maybe like that, a uh, pretty good choice of material there. But it gave us some pretty crisp, clean edges when we used it in the non-heated example with the stainless steel. Uh, but when we heated it up, it did a really nice job of uh, leaving that logo mark on a piece of wood. We tried a couple of different materials. Ultimately, in our testing, the wood worked out the best, so that's what we showed you guys. Uh, but definitely a lot of fun with all these different examples. So hopefully you can see some of the benefits there of different material types in our 3D printing applications. Obviously, we've got more and more strength as we continue to build upon this and even more capabilities that we can take advantage of with parts like our stainless steel. So not only is it gonna be much stronger than what we did with the plastic and composite materials, but it's gonna have a lot of different, um, you know, open doors for use case scenarios, right? Maybe it's a heated type situation. Uh, you guys can think about some different ways to leverage the metal 3D printing technology that's available on the Metal X. All right, so thanks again for joining us, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to join us for the next one where we're going to test out some different designs for 3D printed pipe vendors.